iPadOS 18 is arriving soon and there are a lot of great features. Here are the biggest ones I'm most excited for as a daily iPad user. I use Notes a lot, probably more than your average bear. It's where I script a lot of my videos, write local copies of my articles, jot down ideas for short form videos, and keep track of changes throughout iOS betas. With this milestone update, there are a lot of awesome improvements. To start, when you hand write a note with Apple Pencil, a new feature called Smart Script will automatically adjust it. It's kinda crazy. It uses on-device machine learning models to mimic your handwriting, but make it a lot more legible, so your lines across will be straight. I got to see a demo of this and holy smokes is it insanely cool. If you misspell a word, it can fix it for you in your handwriting. You can grab a word from the middle of a sentence and just erase it or move it and your sentence will just readjust filling in that space. It takes about two paragraphs of writing for it to mimic your style and it's nuts to see it work and how well it works. You can also finally add audio recordings to your notes. It will record the audio in your note, transcribing it in real time. Then it will give you a short summary afterwards. This is all searchable too, which makes finding stuff uber easy. The last big thing here is that you can collapse sections. I usually keep a running note for each Apple software release. Now I can have collapsible sections for each beta that comes out and any changes that I find. Something you may not know about me is that I do a lot of woodworking. So I do a lot of like sketching and back of my hand math on my iPads. I've usually got one up in the wood shop with me where I design my projects with Apple Pencil. So the new math notes feature has me pretty stoked. You can just write down a math problem or conversion and it will do it on the fly as soon as you write or type an equal sign. More impressive, you can use variables too. If I'm designing a box and I want to make these sides out of a single piece of wood so the grain wraps around, I can assign a variable to each side as I'm sketching. Then just write an equation adding up all of those variables. As I adjust them, the answer will compute in real time. And if you happen to be writing an equation, math notes can graph it with at least some limitations. No bar charts or anything like that, though I hope they would consider adding them in the future. This works here in notes, but also in the all new calculator app. Yes, it's happened. Let me know in the comments, by the way, were you waiting for the calculator app on the iPad or do you just move on with any of the third party ones. So calculator supports those math notes, but has full basic and scientific calculators too. And it's been lovingly designed here for the iPad. There's been a lot of back and forth on why Apple never brought the calculator app to iPad before. Personally, I think it's because there was no need for just a basic app. There were those thousands on the app store. They only wanted to do this when it made sense adding math notes to notes and syncing them with a dedicated calculator or scientific app did make sense for a unique experience. So we have it now. It doesn't hurt that it was an easy upsell for Apple Pencil either. This next feature, I'm sure I'm going to end up using all the time. Let's pause for a second. I gotta thank my sponsor for this video, ESR. If you've got an iPhone, you, you probably need to charge it at some point. And if you know anything about me, you know that I love MagSafe and Qi2 chargers, and ESR has a pair of new ones that I am totally stoked to show you. This is the ESR Qi2 3-in-1 Travel Wireless Charger. When it's folded, it's barely thicker than my iPhone, and when you open it up, you have a Qi2 charger right there on the front that'll give you 15 watts of wireless power, then around back, you'll find a little pedestal for your AirPods or other Qi device to charge, and the USB-C port where you can plug in that Apple Watch charger. By the way, this supports Apple certified fast charging, which means you can charge an Apple Watch Ultra to 100% in an hour and 40 minutes, which is four and a half times faster than other two and a half watt chargers. Since it can be used as a stand, it works great for standby mode too. See your little alarm clock, see widgets, or just watch a video. This is the ESR Qi2 mini wireless charger. It magnetically connects to the back of your iPhone, has an integrated braided USB-C cable with even a metal cover on the end of it. This will charge your iPhone at up to 15 watts of power, which is the maximum wireless charging for your iPhone 12, 13, 14, or 15. That 15 watts is super quick. 
since it is G2 certified, you can charge your iPhone 15 Pro Max to 85% in just two hours, which is twice as fast as a standard seven and a half watt charger. Not only do these have great quality, but they're also really affordable. If you want to check any of them out, there's links from down below in the description. Thanks again to ESR for sponsoring this video. When you mirror someone else's iPad screen through SharePlay, now you're able to interact with it. I can tap or draw to help show someone what to do. Don't worry, Grams, I'll help you figure out how to watch Ted Lasso again. And if tapping and drawing isn't enough, you can request full access to control their device for them too. In the Files app, two big changes. First, you can finally format external drives, including multiple formats such as XFAT or APFS. Second, you can finally, finally, finally tell it which files to permanently keep on your device. No longer do you have to download or open a file only to have iCloud offload it later. So far, these are your primary iPad specific features, but there are a ton of others that are shared with iPhone. Nearly all the features found in iOS 18 are also here on iPadOS 18. If you want a super deep dive on all of those, check out my other video that I've linked here. Otherwise, uh, at least hit them from a high level for the sake of completeness. Your home screen is getting a redesign. Apps and widgets can be placed anywhere, and you can have multiple ones for just different pages. Apple has new dark icons for its native apps, and third-party apps are getting those too. There's also a new larger iconic set that gets rid of the labels below them. App icons can be tinted to match your style or your wallpaper. Finally, you can both lock apps behind Face ID, Touch ID, or hide them in a dedicated folder in the app library. Control Center has been refreshed with a new organization system that split and splits it into multiple pages. First will be your favorites, followed by other dedicated pages for home, media, and connectivity. Controls will be coming from third-party apps too to make it even more powerful. We have an Apple made passwords app now. This is basically the iCloud's passwords we had before, just pulled out and built into its own app. It can save all of your website or Wi-Fi passwords and will alert you if some of your accounts have been compromised. Inside of messages, there are a lot of changes. You can schedule messages to be sent later at your preferred time, long time coming, might I add. Text can be styled with italics, bold, strike through, plus there are new animations. Make your emoji jump up and down or make your text wiggle. And tap back can be done using any emoji. Game mode comes to iPhone and iPad. This will maximize your device's performance and reduce background tasks. At the same time, it helps reduce latency for your AirPods or wireless gaming controllers. I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed on my iPad, so I'm pretty excited to have this. And then the Photos app, it's been redesigned too. This has been more controversial though. Lots of users on social media have been torn. I like the look of it, but we'll see if Apple changes course by the time that it releases. The only thing that I didn't go into much so far or mention so far is Apple Intelligence. Apple Intelligence will be coming to all M series iPads. That's the recent iPad Airs and iPad Pros. It has far reaching features from removing distractions in photos, a much more powerful Siri that can integrate with LLMs like ChatGPT, and it can intelligently help with your daily tasks like organizing your inbox or prioritizing notifications. I'll have more on Apple Intelligence as it gets closer to release, but it's seriously worth getting excited about. iPadOS 18 will be released this fall alongside iOS 18 and Apple's other major software platforms. Apple Intelligence will be launching as a beta when it does release this fall, and new features will be added over time. So what iPadOS features are you most excited to see? Let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, be sure you are subscribed to the channel with those notifications turned on so you don't miss the latest videos and Apple news.